This is California, USA, where around 1.7 million cows on thousands of dairy farms produce more than 13 million gallons of milk every day. So how does this massive amount turn into the sweet treat that once saved soldiers' lives and changed history? I visited one of the largest factories in the world to dive into the fascinating process of making condensed milk and to share the story with you. In 1856, American inventor Gail Borden first came up with this product. His creation solved the dilemma of preserving milk in the days before refrigerators, making it possible to store milk in cans for at least a year. During the American Civil War, it played a crucial role in supplying soldiers with milk in combat zones where dairy cows were not available. Thanks to its long shelf life and valuable nutritional properties, it became the preferred choice for feeding soldiers. The process of making condensed milk begins on dairy farms. To meet the high demand for this delicious product, factories like Nestle's in California operate around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This factory processes more than 420,000 gallons of milk daily. Massive tank trucks arrive nonstop, transporting between 130,000 and 185,000 gallons of milk each day from nearby farms. Most of the incoming milk was collected just six hours earlier, so it's incredibly fresh. However, before the milk is accepted, it undergoes lab testing. The fat and salt content must meet factory standards, and the milk must be free of antibiotics to avoid allergic reactions in some people. But where do the farmers get such milk? Most of the milk in the U.S. comes from roughly 60,000 dairy farms, where over 9 million cows are raised specifically for milk production. Over the past century, the milking machine has become an essential tool. The part of the machine that attaches to the cow's teat is called a cup, and it works similarly to a hand, applying pressure to the udder to extract milk. A farmer can manually milk about 6 cows per hour, but with a specialized device, that number can jump to 100 cows per hour. The ingenuity of this innovative device has optimized milk production, but the way a farmer cares for their cows also impacts the quality of the milk. The more care given to the animals, the longer their lifespan and the more milk they produce. On this massive dairy farm, 8,000 cows graze. It's one of many farms that use technology to improve cow living conditions and boost productivity. In cow carousels, known as milking parlors, up to 80 cows can be milked at once, twice a day. Dairy cows are creatures of habit, and they enjoy sticking to a routine, which makes the milking process smoother. These advanced milking parlors outperform traditional machines, increasing the milk flow rate by 30%. Before attaching the milking cups, workers disinfect the cow's udders with an iodine solution. This process mimics the sucking motion of a calf to ensure organic milk production. The entire procedure takes about seven minutes, and after milking, the cups automatically detach. These animals spend around eight hours a day eating. Consuming 100 pounds of feed and 80 gallons of water, a cow can produce up to 10 gallons of milk a day, seven days a week. Thanks to technological advancements and more nutrient-rich feeds, today's cows are three times more productive than they were 50 years ago. A dairy cow starts producing milk at around two years old, once she gives birth to her first calf. Typically, the calf is separated from its mother within an hour of birth to prevent harmful bacteria from reaching the mother's udder. From then on, the calf is bottle-fed with its mother's milk, while the cow begins her career as a milk producer. For 305 consecutive days, the cow is milked twice a day, after which she gets a well-deserved 60-day break to give birth to another calf. Once the cow delivers, the milking process begins all over again. The liquid produced by cows is a nutrient-rich substance that consists of 87% water. This process begins when food is digested in the cow's stomach and transformed into nutrients, which are absorbed into the bloodstream. These nutrients travel to the mammary glands, where they are converted into the valuable liquid we know as milk. Milk is collected from the udder at a temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit and transported via pumps into storage tanks, which are then cooled. 
In these tanks, the milk is stored at a safe temperature of 36 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. However, at this stage, the milk is still in its natural state and may contain harmful microorganisms. That's why it is loaded into a 5,300 gallon tanker truck and taken to a dairy processing plant. After the milk has passed all stages of quality control, it is sent to a centrifuge separator to speed up the separation process. In the top section, cone-shaped discs spin at an impressive speed of 7,000 revolutions per minute, processing over 5,800 gallons per hour. Under the force of centrifugal action, the heavier skim milk moves outward, while the lighter cream moves toward the center. As a result, we get cream with a fat content of around 20%, and skim milk with a fat content of less than 1%. The skim milk serves as the starting point for making condensed milk. Next, the milk undergoes the pasteurization process to destroy any bacteria present. To begin this procedure, the milk is first cooled to a temperature of around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, then passed through a heat exchanger that raises its temperature to 162 degrees Fahrenheit. After heating, the milk is transferred to a chamber where it is held for 15 and a half seconds, achieving the required level of pasteurization. The milk is then cooled back down to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. In less than 40 seconds, complete pasteurization reduces the bacteria count in the product by 99%. Before the introduction of pasteurization technology, most consumed milk was in its natural state, leading to quick spoilage and exposing people to the risk of infection from potentially dangerous microorganisms. In 1862, the famous French scientist Louis Pasteur proposed an innovative solution originally aimed at preventing wine from spoiling, which was later applied to milk. After milk is pasteurized, a large amount of sugar is added to it. The sugar not only gives the milk a sweet taste, but also acts as a preservative, helping to extend its shelf life. The mixture of milk and sugar is reheated so that the sugar fully dissolves and becomes uniform. The heat not only helps dissolve the sugar, but also prevents the formation of crystals that could affect the smooth texture of condensed milk. After this, the milk enters an evaporator, an enormous device designed to remove water from the milk. At this stage, the milk becomes thicker as the water content is reduced by about 60%. Using heat and pressure, the evaporator manages to evaporate the water from the milk without altering its properties, allowing the concentration of solids like proteins, sugars, and fats. This process gives condensed milk its thick texture and delightful sweet flavor. The evaporator consists of a series of vertical structures called calandrias. Inside each calandria is a set of stainless steel tubes through which the milk circulates. A steam chamber surrounds these tubes. The milk enters each calandria from the top and flows down through tiny channels. As it moves downward, the steam enveloping the tubes heats the milk, causing the water within it to evaporate. Once the milk reaches the desired thickness, it is removed from the evaporator. Next, the milk undergoes an additional process called homogenization, where the fat is broken down into small uniform particles to improve its consistency and stability. Before the condensed milk is packaged, the containers must be sterilized to eliminate any microorganisms that could affect the product's quality. Once the condensed milk is processed and has reached the perfect consistency, it is transferred to a packaging machine. These machines precisely measure the required amount of product into each container, ensuring consistency and reducing waste. After filling, the containers are sealed tightly to prevent any contaminants from entering. To ensure the product's safety, the filled and sealed containers undergo an additional sterilization process. The cans are placed in autoclaves, where they are exposed to steam under high pressure to destroy any remaining microorganisms. This procedure ensures that the condensed milk inside the container is completely safe to consume and has a long shelf life. In addition to meeting domestic demand, condensed milk is widely exported around the world. Thanks to its long shelf life and high nutritional value, it is a popular product in countries with limited access to fresh milk. Condensed milk producing countries like the United States and several European nations actively supply this product 
to markets in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The export of condensed milk helps strengthen international trade relationships and ensures that people in various regions have access to quality dairy nutrition.